Daddy, you gotta cut that part out when you say we're not getting paid. Why? It's not good. He's not recording anymore. No, I'm still recording. Hi, this is Andy from Creative Underground. I'm the owner of a professional recording studio and audio visual production and consulting business here in metropolitan Washington, DC. Today, I'm gonna to be doing a video review of the Phoenix Pro or Phoenix Pro PTU 6000. It's an eight channel uh, wireless microphone system. Uh, we're gonna do an unboxing. I'm gonna do a feature overview. We're gonna test out the features uh, we'll look specifically at audio quality, the range and penetration of the uh, wireless microphones. And if I decide to keep it, um, I'm also going to install it into my mixer case and maybe we'll show you that too. Uh, this is part of a new series of video content on live streaming technology that I'm going to be doing. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, like and subscribe to be notified when we'll be uh, putting out more content like this. So. Let me first give some background to why I'm doing this uh, video review on this device. Uh, not that long ago, I was asked to assist uh, a colleague of mine on a large and very important corporate event. And in this event, we were going to have six speakers at any one time on stage. And we would also need two handheld microphones uh, in the audience for Q&A. So we were going to have six lavaliers, two handhelds. I decided to start looking into eight-channel UHF systems. I currently own one four-channel lavalier system, one two-channel lavalier system, and a number of one and two-channel UHF systems. But of course, every time I get on site for an event, it's a lot of wiring and patching to get all of that set up. And I'm all about speed and efficiency for events. I want to be able to show up on site, uncrate my equipment, plug it in and get to work as quickly as possible with, about, with the minimum amount of setup and breakdown required. So all of my audio equipment is already racked inside of a case and I started looking into an 8 channel UHF system because I wanted to have it permanently patched into this case so that everything would be permanently wired to my 24 channel audio mixer. I kept seeing great reviews of the Phoenix Pro wireless microphones and in fact if you look right now on the screen I have Amazon pulled up and the if you sort by the average customer review, you can see that the top rated microphone system, wireless microphone system, is indeed a Phoenix Pro system, uh, which caught my attention. Um, I started looking, uh, you know, at these uh, Phoenix Pro systems. I've not heard of them before, and here's another one here. So it seemed like they were getting some really strong reviews, and, you know, 2002 uh, reviews as of right now with a rating of 4.6. Uh, not too shabby at all. So I started trying to find more information about their eight channel systems uh, and I couldn't find out as much information as I would have liked. There was a lot of reviews on these, uh, the, the cheaper systems, the four, four channel systems. I was really interested to look at an eight channel system and see whether I could use this for large events where typically you'd be looking at bringing Shore or Sennheiser equipment. Can I spend under $1,000 and compete with a system that would typically cost me somewhere around $8,000? So I decided to reach out to the manufacturer and ask them if they would let me test out one of their systems and have me give my open and honest opinion. And they obliged. So here we have it, the Phoenix Pro PTU 6000. This is the eight channel uh, wireless microphone system. It comes in around about $525 US. So now let's uh, unbox this uh, system and we'll start to walk through some of the, the features. So right here on the box we can see some of the first clues of what's going to set this apart from using something like the Rode Wireless Go. This is UHF based. It's not going to be using that same 2.4 gigahertz frequency, which is a very congested frequency range to be using. It's not the kind of equipment that you want to be taking into a live event, especially something that's mission critical. 
especially if you're using you know multiple microphones. In our case, we were trying to use six uh, wireless lavaliers, all using that 2.4 gigahertz uh, frequency. Um, bear in mind, there's a lot of other equipment competing for that same frequency range. Cell phones, wireless routers, I believe even microwave ovens. There's a lot of things all operating in that 2.4 gigahertz frequency spectrum. And it's all going to have an impact on the audio quality. You're going to get clicks, pops, and drops. You're going to have an impact on the range that the uh, microphones can operate at. And you've probably already found yourself, if you've used 2.4 gigahertz wireless microphones, that even just turning your body can be enough to block the signal and get dropouts, let alone walls or anything like that. With a UHF system, if it's powerful enough, this one, I believe, uh, can get over 300 feet. And we're going to do some range testing with this system later on and see just how far one can get using this system. The other thing that sets this system apart from not just other competitors, but even Phoenix Pro's other systems, the, the lower price systems that come in around the $300 range, is that this particular system allows you to select the frequencies. So it's frequency agile versus fixed frequency. What that means is that when you power the system up, you scan your uh, environment and you can lock in frequencies that are known good. Typically, when you get on site for an event, that's the first thing you're going to want to do with your microphone system. And it can sniff out where the strongest signals will be so that you're not going to have any audio issues. All right, so let's open this up and take a look inside. And we'll show you everything that you get inside the box. Uh, we have the user manual. I always like to take a look at the uh, user manuals um, just to see how well written they are. And at first glance, this one, the English looks to be good. It's brief and to the point. Everything looks pretty good in there. Here we have the antenna, four antenna that will be connected to the back of the device. In my case, because I'm going to be rack mounting it, I may opt to add, there's an optional uh, accessory that they offer, and that allows you to extend the antenna to the back of your rack casing. So that's certainly something that I'll be looking into. So there we have the device itself. And on the back you can see we have individual XLR outputs for each one of the channels as well as one overall mix out. So depending on your application, in my case, I want to have all eight XLR outputs permanently wired into my 24 channel audio mixer so that I can individually control each of the uh, microphones. In your case, perhaps you might have an application where you would want to have everything uh, mixed down into one output, which you have that option here. And then here are the four connection points for the antenna. Just going to pop that back in there. We'll pull this out and see what's in the next layer down. So here we have the handheld microphones themselves. And the first thing you notice is they have a really good weight to them and they're made of metal, not plastic. I've spent far more on microphone systems from you know, pretty well-known manufacturers that I've bought equipment from in the past uh, that have been made of plastic. So this is pretty impressive at this uh, price point uh, to find, um, find it to be this well-constructed. So here's where the batteries go in. It takes a standard AA battery or two AA batteries in there.
there's your power on button and it has a small screen on there. I'll go and get some batteries in a second so that we can power this up. The unit did actually come with batteries for every one of these microphones. Uh, I've already opened this once when it first arrived just to take a quick look, so I've actually removed those. Uh, but I will go and get some shortly so that we can power up some of these microphones and then we can do some testing. But that's what you're getting in the box. You're getting eight of those microphones. Here's your power supply. They've also included a quarter inch cable here. So this is what you would use to get from that mixed uh, output on the back of the rack mount unit if you wanted to just get all eight channels over one cable. This is the cable that's included for that. And then now we'll go down to the final layer. There's one more layer underneath that one. And here, oh, here's all the batteries. I guess they were in here all along. Uh, four more microphones. All of the batteries you could possibly need. And some brightly colored silicone, if you like. Uh, I don't know what to call these, but the intention, I believe, is that you can put them on your microphone. I'm not sure how far up one is supposed to do them, but by putting them on there, it's very easy to identify which channel is which. Um, you know, a lot of us will tape numbers or, um, you know, some identifier, letter or number onto each microphone so we know channel one, channel eight and so on and so forth. But the second uh, benefit of, of this is it also allows it to, to stand up on a table and not roll off if someone were to put this down uh, because of its design, it, it allows it to, to sit nicely. So, not sure if I'll use them, but it's nice to know that I have them. All right, so, let's pop some batteries in, power it up and take a look. Batteries are going to go in this way. And again, th it does not feel cheap. Even the plastic that's used internally, putting those batteries in, uh, the plastic feels high quality, which is nice. I don't have any concerns about the plastic snapping, uh, which is usually the case when you're looking at some uh, microphones. I've had that, again, even on microphones that are significantly more expensive and, and well-known. All right, so here you can see, upon powering it up there, you can see it's telling me which group and channel, and it's also giving me an indication of the battery life right off the bat, which is really quite handy. And it also tells you if the microphone is muted. So if I push just briefly the button, you hear a satisfying click, and you see the mute icon appear so that I know that this microphone is muted. And then I push it again to be unmuted. Also, you can see at the top of the microphone here, you have your IR sensor. And this is how you would go about pairing this microphone with the rack mount unit. So when we talked about it being frequency agile, each time you want to scan for available frequencies, you can then synchronize the rack mount unit with each microphone with the new updated frequency, knowing that that's going to be a good stable frequency where you won't be getting dropouts. It's worth noting as well that the wireless receiver is also housed in this 1U shell, which is metal also. Um, so again, it, f it feels nice quality. I also noticed as well that the individual volume controls, you can see that you have an individual volume control for all eight channels on the front here, uh, which is very handy if you're using this option that we talked about with the mix out uh, with this kind of a cable. Uh, that, to some extent, foregoes the need for a, an audio mixer because you can control the level of each of these eight channels using this, and it has... Uh, very satisfying clicks. You can feel as you turn the dial, you can feel uh, a number of clicks 
as you move the encoder around. So I kind of like that because it gives you the ability to count how many clicks you've turned so that you can match levels uh, from one channel to the next. So I do like the, uh, the encoders that they've chosen to use there. So the antenna, simply just push onto the back here and twist, and then they lock, and then these can be rotated wherever you need them to be. Now we're going to plug the unit in. I'm going to disappear down under the desk here to plug the unit in. All right, so it's plugged in. I'm going to push and hold the power button. And you can see that it starts up here. You have individual readouts for each of the eight channels so that you can see which group, which channel and frequency uh, are selected. And again, you can see that you have an infrared on each side here, there's one here and one here. This is also where you would pair the microphone by holding the infrared um, receiver that's on the microphone with the sender, which is, or transmitter, which is here. And that this is how you would pair them. So moving across, you can see that next to the power and the volume encoders, we have these three buttons we have an up button, a down button, and a set button. And this is what you would use to set the frequency of each of your microphones. So you can either push and hold the set button, and you can see it's now scanning to see where the best frequency is, and it's determined that this is the best frequency. And then you can push again one more time and see it says F. Here you hold the microphone with the IR receiver close to the sensor. And now you can see that we now have paired the handheld microphone with the receiver. And we can tell this because if you look at the screen there, and I, if I'm holding the microphone up to my mouth, you can see that as I talk, the antenna icon is animated and synchronized with the sound of my voice. So. That is the simplest way to scan and lock in your microphones. You can also do it manually. You can do a, a uh, short press here and you can cycle through uh, frequencies if you so wish to. But I would encourage you to use the, just push set when you choose the one that you want. Uh, and then again, you would have to uh, push set for the, when you get that F, then you're going to hold it, uh, hold the microphone so that the two IR uh, sensors can read one another. And now you can see it's now locked in at this alternate frequency. So you can do it manually. I would encourage you typically though to push and hold set, allow it to scan the environment and pick the, the best frequency. And you're going to do that for each of the eight channels or however many channels you're going to be using. Check, and there it is. You can also see if you do a long press on the up button, not on the down button, there's no, no other function available, but on the up button, if you long press and hold, it says L on, and if I do it again, it'll say L off. That is locking the frequency in. So you can, if you cho choose to, once you've set the frequency for each channel, you can push and hold the up button and it'll lock that frequency and uh, prevent you from inadvertently changing that uh, frequency or channel. To move to the second channel, we're gonna push the down button, then hit set. Now we're working with the second channel, we're gonna push and hold the set button. And again, it's gonna go through and determine the best next frequency for channel two and would continue through that process by pairing each microphone across all eight of the channels. So these three buttons are gonna work with the first two channels, 
these three buttons will work with the next two, these three with five and six, and these three with seven and eight. So here we are on the Phoenix Pro website. You can see, uh, as I mentioned, it comes in around $525 here uh, for this version that has the eight microphones. They do offer uh, different configurations of this. You can get it with eight body packs if you want all lavalier microphones, or you can get four handhelds and four uh, body packs if you need four and four. In my case, I'm looking to probably purchase um, I've got this system with the with the eight, and then I'm probably going to be purchasing eight body packs as well. Um, that way, I have maximum flexibility uh, for any eventuality that I might need to cover. Uh, if you'd be interested in me doing a review of the body packs once I have those, let me know in the comments, and I'll be happy to uh, do a review of those. Uh, let's take a quick look through though. Um, on their website though and look at some of the features that they mentioned make sure that we're covering everything here we've already talked about the auto scan and walk through that uh, metal construction yep we've definitely noticed that rack mountable yep I probably should have mentioned that I guess it's obvious since I'm planning to rack mount it but it does come pre-installed with the with the rack ears so it should be uh, nice and easy to install in my case the information on here it says uh, four XLR outputs for each channel and one quarter inch TS. That's actually incorrect. There's eight. Uh, I think this is actually a mistake on their website, perhaps from a from the four channel system. Perhaps they just copied this information, but it's actually an eight channel system. And as I showed you, it does have eight XLR outputs, and they boast a 328 foot long operation range. We're going to test that out uh, in this uh, in this review and eight hours of battery life for each microphone. Uh, of course, one of the nice things about this, by using uh, the uh, regular AA batteries, we can choose whether we want to use rechargeables or whether we just want to use you know, uh, regular alkaline batteries, which gives us a lot of flexibility for an event. Uh, we can quickly switch out the batteries and not have to worry about charging. So just to compare the cost that we're talking about here, if we were to go with something like a Sennheiser or Shore system, we're out of the sub thousand dollar range then. We're in the thousand dollar range if we're looking for a one or two channel system, but looking for eight channels of wireless microphones, certainly you couldn't do that for under a thousand dollars. This is probably the only system available uh, and if it stands up to the scrutiny of the audio tests uh, that I've seen other people describe that it uh, performs well at, then we may be onto a winner here. Most of the other budget systems that you'll see from other manufacturers, you're going to have too high of a noise floor and issues that would make it unusable for professional events. My hope with this system, if the reviews that I've read from other people uh, to be believed is that this uh, has the audio quality that one would need. And, you know, I have an eight channel system here uh, for $525. And then for under $50 per body pack, I can be adding additional body packs uh, in order to mix and match between lavalier and handheld uh, operation. Okay, so now we're going to do a quick audio test. Right now I'm talking to you with my lavalier microphone, and I also have a shotgun microphone here. I'm going to switch those off. And now I'm talking to you from the handheld. I can immediately notice that it's got a real nice fullness to the sound. Uh, obviously it'll be easier to hear once we get into DaVinci Resolve and start doing post if there's uh, much noise uh, or anything else that needs to be cleaned up. But, um, you know, from what I'm hearing with my, my earbuds plugged in right now, it sounds phenomenal. Uh, it's worth noting as well that it's a very hot signal. I had to back the preamp uh, in the A10 Mini here down quite a ways because it's a really, uh, really hot signal. Um, obviously, I can adjust that. The volume encoder on the front panel here should I wish to do so. Um, I'm imagining that by having the 
volume maximize here and then turn down in the ATEM would probably give me the lowest noise floor. We shall see again once we get into post. Okay, so I'd like to now move on to the range test, but before we do, let's just preface this by giving you a little bit of information about where we're conducting this review from. I'm in a professional recording studio in a converted basement of my house. Uh, when I say a professional recording studio, what that entails is we have six layers of sheetrock hung on the walls in here. We have essentially a isolated structure, uh, room in a room design so that we can achieve sound isolation. Now that is an incredibly challenging environment for wireless technology. When I get my assistant shortly to uh, take the microphone, I'm gonna have him walk about the house and as he leaves the room and close, closes the doors behind him, all of our doors are solid core heavy studio doors. They're thick uh, and heavy. Same with the walls, like I say, six layers of sheetrock. It's a pretty atypical um, residence. So when my assistant starts walking away with the microphone and is explaining whereabouts in the house he is, I'm going to be, you know, interested to see how far he can get without dropouts. And this would not be typical, you know, most office buildings or places that you would be using this kind of microphone in would only have one or two layers of, of sheetrock, you know, as you go through uh, from one room to the next. So this should be a really interesting test for these microphones. So I'm going to go and get uh, some volunteers to help me and we can do some range and penetration uh, tests with the handheld microphone and see how well it performs. Okay, ready? No running. Okay. And keep talking while you're walking. Understood. Okay, coming up to the door to leave the control area. Now, going through the double door thing. Now I'm in the live room. And now I'm leaving the live room. I'm right next to the bathroom coming up. I'm about to get onto the stairs. Now I'm on the stairs. Now I'm halfway up the stairs. Almost at the top. Opening the door. Walking across towards the bathroom. Now I'm going up the other stairs. Going up the stairs. Halfway through the stairs. Now I'm currently at the top of the stairs. Now going into mommy and daddy's bedroom, halfway towards the bathroom. Now I am in mommy and daddy bathroom, and now I'm walking back and going back and going down towards the stairs, and now handing it off to Brooks, going down the stairs, halfway down the stairs. In the hallway, just got off the stairs. In the kitchen. Going through. Opening the door to get into the basement. Going down the stairs. Halfway down the stairs. About to get to the bottom. At the bottom by the guest room. Walking down. By the light switch. By the guest toilet or bathroom in the live room coming to the double doors opening one of the doors coming around back to the exit door and we are done well done thank you ladies and gentlemen excellent job uh we are professionals <laughs> indeed you are well that was impressive Can because it, it didn't cut out once it made it all the way to uh, bathroom without mm -hmm. any dropout so yeah, I was talking it again. passes the test because bear in mind that we've got six layers of sheetrock in the studio big heavy doors I mean that's pretty impressive that it made it all the way up there without any okay thank you thanks for your help bye bye so in summary what do I make of this uh, eight channel Phoenix Pro wireless microphone system well I got to say, I'm really impressed. I like it a lot. We've already talked about the advantages of UHF. Um, so that 
is something that I definitely need. Um, I love that this unit is frequency agile versus fixed frequency, which allows me to scan the environment and lock in good frequencies for each of the microphones. I love that it has the flexibility for me to switch between handhelds or uh, body packs, and I can have up to eight of, of each or any combination thereof. And, you know, what's not to love about the price? $525 for an eight-channel system, uh, which is less than I would pay for a single-channel system if I was using Shure or Sennheiser equipment. And the audio quality and the build quality is there. I mean, the, the range uh, and penetration to be able to get from my soundproof studio three floors up, or two floors up, I guess you'd say, um, you know, to the uh, second level of the house without dropouts is really impressive, you know, and we also mentioned that they have U.S. support, a 12-month warranty, uh, and some discount programs. I mean, it's a really, really good deal. Um, so I'm going to be installing this in my uh, rack with the 24-channel uh, the audio mixer, um, and uh, I'll be putting this to good use. Phoenix Pro or Phoenix Pro offer U.S. support. There's a 12-month warranty, and they offer 5% uh, discounts on new orders. They also have a customization program, so you can customize the equipment uh, if you wanted to have uh, a different configuration of the uh, microphones. And they also offer uh, in-ear monitor systems and, and other uh, professional audio equipment. So it's worth taking a look around at their website. Um, I'm also going to post below my affiliate link, um, and if you use that uh, affiliate link rather than shopping at Amazon, it'll save you money, and it also uh, helps me a little bit. Um, it'll, it'll help me create more content for you like this. If you've enjoyed watching this video and found it useful, um, please again do like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if there's something you'd like me to cover in an upcoming video, I'd be delighted to do that. And if there's anything that I can do to help you, please do visit my website at www.creativeunderground.co. Uh, if you're looking for any help with your audio visual productions, I would love to help you. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video. I've been Andy from Creative Underground. My voice, whenever it's on microphone, it sounds like very squeaky. Is there a way you can make it a bit lower? <laughs> uh, I can't make your voice lower. Your voice sounded awesome. I thought it sounded really good. Yes. This microphone makes everybody sound good. That's why. Wait, can I hear it? Once I finish the video, yes. Yes.